Okay, here we've got uh, blast from the not so ancient past. Uh, we've got a Baofeng BF666S and a Baofeng uh, BHD uh, BA28. And these are both um, the same thing as the Baofeng BF888S, uh, BF828, um, BF480 and uh, about three dozen other uh, model names and numbers variations on that. As you can see, these radios are very, very similar in shape and size, if not exactly the same. They are, uh, this one's a little bit newer. This radio is about eight years old. Uh, this is one of the first Baofeng 16 channel UHF rigs that was put on the market uh, back in 2000 and 12 give or take um, they have been reprogrammed uh, to the FRS channels uh, channels 1 through 14 um, channels 15 and 16 were for a, uh, a GMRS repeater that's no longer on the air so um, but channels 1 to 14 are still in here so just waiting for the you know flood of comments. Oh, you're you're operating these illegally on the default factory frequencies. No, these are not on the default factory frequencies. I programmed them for FRS immediately after getting them. Uh, they are on the FRS frequencies, and I do have a GMRS license, so I can do uh, up to five watts on the FRS frequencies uh, channels one through seven, and then of course 500 milliwatts on. Um, channels 8 to 14 so uh, there are some folks using FRS 1 so we're not going to use FRS 1 we're going to use FRS 1 2 3 radio check radio check Radio check, radio check, one two. Radio check, radio check, one two, one two. Radio check, over. Uh, so these are pretty good radios. Um, these have been sitting in storage for years. They have not been charged. They haven't been used. They've just been sitting. Um, so I'm really, I was kind of surprised when they just fired right up when I turned them on. Um, you know, they're, these things are everywhere now. They're everywhere, but um, they're actually not bad. Uh, you know, if you get them off the factory, you know, out of the box channels, uh, they, they are decent. Uh, the way these are programmed is for carrier squelch on all channels. So um, the squelch level itself is turned up. Uh, do you know if they're down with the lift? The factory, um, not the factory, excuse me, the squelch level has been turned up in the programming itself uh, because the receive is carrier squelch. So now the reason I'm saying that is the folks that are on uh, FRS1 are kind of right on the fringe of, um, you know, being able to, to be received. It's the tower crane crew. They've been on there for several days now. And, um, they're running carrier squelch on FRS1, which I think is kind of interesting. And there's some folks on FRS8. So let's dial up FRS8 real quick. And they are squelch predicted. This one's on FRS 8. This is still on FRS 1. And let's go. Just for uh, these are not the factory antennas. These are about thing 5R antennas, which do better on UHF than the factory antennas. Uh, the out of the box antennas on these radios are pretty terrible. So. 
Um, I have not checked to see how much charge these batteries have left in them after sitting in the uh, storage box for years and years. Um, but uh, they transmit and receive okay. I'm going to do some more tests, but uh, you know, these things are actually. Oh, that's probably desensing the hell out of it. Yep. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, radio check. One, two, one, two, radio check. Radio check channel 14, radio check 14, hello, hello. Okay, let's check this guy. Two, three, four, actually it makes more sense to go 16, 16, 15, 14. Hello, hello, one, two, one, two, radio check. So they, they transmit um, a CTCSS tone, but they don't, um, there's no tone squelch on receive. It's, it's carrier squelch only because um, I like to know um, yeah, it's a little sticky right there at the, the hopper channels because it probably hasn't been there and uh, this guy's on VHF. Um, Carrier squelch because uh, 154.5275 as well. Uh, I, I don't want to, you know, use a frequency that somebody else is using, even if I'm, you know, protected by CTCSS or DCS because uh, there's still interference, even if you can't hear it uh, with those selected calling features like uh, CTCSS and DCS. Receive on these things is actually not terrible. Um, I don't know how much power they're putting out, but uh, it says better than five watts on the back. So um, we know that's the Chinese would never lie. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it, it's kind of cool to bring these things out of retirement, as it were. Um, I've got a bunch of them. Uh, some of them have been placed in various. Uh, emergency equipment caches as a uh, kind of like uh, poor man's uh, intra squad radio system type deal because uh, they are short range radios short range radios excuse me uh, no matter how you look at it um you know midland and uh, motorola and all those companies would have one believe that you can get 50 miles or 75 miles or 18 miles or whatever it is out of a, a two watt UHF handheld and um, that ain't gonna happen uh, unless you're on top of a mountain and the person you're talking to is on top of another mountain uh, 50 miles away and there's uh, nobody else you know using the frequency that you guys are using and from my experience I can tell you that um, when you go to the top of a mountain with radios, uh, especially, you know, on a public frequency band like FRS or PMR446 or GMRS or MURS, uh, the channel's got somebody in it. <laughs> uh, you might not, you know, hear it until you get to a higher elevation, but the channel's got somebody using it. Uh, almost all of them will. Uh, unless you're in a, in a rural area where there's there isn't a city, you know, a couple miles away, um, but uh, in the city with 
four watts, three watts, I think is what these things is doing are doing. Uh, you know, you'll be lucky to get uh, a mile and a half, two, three miles, maybe if you're up high. Um, street level, mile, mile and a half, uh, maybe a little more if you've got good line of sight. But uh, these guys are about um, about a mile away, and I'm right on the right on the edge of, of their coverage. But um, you know, if you go to the top of a mountain and you're 3,000 feet up, it's a little different. I just wanted to demo these uh, these old rigs, old in quotation marks. Um, they're both BF888s. Uh, I know there's the BF88A on the market now, which is basically these with the FRS channels already in. Hooray. Uh, those are great. Use them. They work. Uh, they work as well, you know, close enough as uh, much more expensive, you know, FRS rigs. Of course, you don't have all the um, CTCSS tones and, and that other stuff that you can choose to, to get a clear channel in a, in a busy urban area or, you know, at the ski resort or whatever it may be. Um, and that is actually important in, in those situations. Uh, and again, I can speak from experience when it comes to that, uh, which is why it's kind of funny that these guys are using FRS channel one with no squelch, DCS or anything, uh, carrier squelch to do tower crane control, which is definitely a, you know, safety of life, quote unquote, um, purpose. Uh, and I'm sure they're getting inter I'm sure the guy on top of the tower is getting QRM to, to some extent because he's, he's sitting on FRS1 uh, with no, you know, squelch protections, just carrier squelch. So um, it's just kind of interesting that they're doing this. And they've been on this channel for, for um, a couple weeks now. Uh, it's kind of interesting.